The topography shows 0.8 diopters of astigmatism, the refraction even more. Here's the tomography showing about 1.2 diopters. Here are the lens calculations, which show 22.5. And finally, here are the torque lens calculators. So we're ready to start our case. The black ink marks are placed at the cardinal meridians. We'll do a best fit with the Mendez gauge here. So note that the 90 degree marks are our most accurate ones and the nasal mark as well. We're marking with the systome at the 35 degree axis because that's where our torque calculator told us would be the best option for this patient. So these marks are only partial depth and just temporary to show us where to align the lens. Fixation being placed on the eye. Here's the paracentesis incision being made. The patient's going to get a little bit of intracameral lidocaine, preservative free, to help numb the eye, squirt it on the surface as well. Just cleaning the ocular surface there with that sponge, make sure everything's pristine. And we're going to fill the anterior chamber with our viscoelastic. So here I'll use a dispersive viscoelastic to protect the corneal endothelium. Now we'll shift the speculum over to have better access here. We're going to put the fixation ring down and we'll use our diamond keratome. There's the diamond keratome and at precisely that meridian making a beautiful incision just like that. That's a nice long tunnel length. It'll be astigmatically neutral. And the tiny bit of bleeding there is ideal because that's going to mean a beautifully sealing incision. Poke another four steps. We're going to get a round caps rex here. For torque lens, we certainly want the capsorexis to overlap the optic. So we'll grab the forceps here, tear the rexis, and you can see the marks on my forcep are at two and a half and five millimeters back. So that'll tell me if I'm making the exact size. Also note that I try to beautifully center the capsorexis on the visual axis, on the pupil, on that light reflex. That, as you can tell, is spot on. Using bounce salt solution on a blunt cannula, We'll do some hydro dissection, separate the cataract from the capsule. Here the cataract wants to come out of the bag, so we'll let it do so, and a quick hydro delineation done as well. More viscoelastic to protect the corneal endothelium, and now we're ready for our phaco probe. So phaco probe in the right hand, we're going to put the Devgan chopper in the left hand. We're going to go into the nucleus, hold on to it, and then with the chopper go behind the nucleus, and we should be able to split this thing quite easily. So we split it once. We'll aspirate more, and this is not too terrible of a uh, dense cataract, so it's pretty straightforward. Keeping the phaco probe right in the center of the eye, the chopper is going to bring the pieces forward to keep them in front of the probe. We're using here a high flow setting, about 400 uh, millimeters of mercury on the vacuum and about 40 cc's a minute on the flow. Note the chopper now goes in the protective position to protect the capsule bag, prevent the capsule from coming forwards. A little bit of cataract material left here. We'll clean that right up. And that looks pretty good. So the last piece of the cataract comes out. And you can see again, the chopper is in that protective position, just to be sure. Now we're going to put the irrigation aspiration probe in the eye to remove the cortex. And as you'll see very shortly, we're going to make it pristine. We're going to make it really pretty. So put the probe in the eye. I like a circumferential manner, so going around in order to remove the cortex. So here we go from quadrant to quadrant, just taking our time. I like this polymer or plastic IA tip, and that way it prevents any metal from ever touching the capsule. I think it's just a higher margin of safety. So removing that, and now the capsule bag is pretty clean. A little bit of polishing just to make sure, and that looks fantastic. We're going to fill our caps or bag here with the cohesive viscoelastic, and then we'll see the outline of our caps or rexus. So here's the cohesive viscoelastic going in the eye, a nice big solid fill, perfect. And you can see how round the caps or rexus is. That's about perfect size, and that will overlap the optic of the lens beautifully. Lens is in the injector. We're going to advance the plunger here, deliver the lens into the caps or bag, and then we'll assist the lens in unfolding. So using the chopper here, dial the lens into the capsule bag, rotate it, allow the arms to open. That looks great. Now we've placed it shy of where we want it. The lens is about 90 degrees. We want to dial it to 30. So here's the IA probe going underneath 
to first remove the viscoelastic. We go from underneath it, remove all the viscoelastic. This is going to be a high flow setting as well. And then we'll remove the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber. Remember, this lens rotates the best in the clockwise manner. So I placed it short there at 90. You can see that inferiorly. And we're going to end up rotating it clockwise about two clock hours. And then we'll line it up beautifully. So again, you can see the overlap of the rexus over the lens edge. That's great. Now slowly rotating the lens a little bit at a time. Remember the marks we made at the beginning of the case in the cornea? We're just going to line up the lens exactly with those marks. And that will be at the planned axis of 35 degrees. Line those up beautifully. Also look in the center of the eye. You can see those Purkinje images. That tells me the eye is beautifully lined up. There's no parallax. Time to seal the incisions now that the lens is at its perfect position. So lightly back and forth with some balanced salt solution to seal that main incision. That looks great. Same thing through the side port. Squirting in the angle as well, making sure there's no retained viscoelastic. And then just adjusting the lens position. That looks beautiful. There is the camera um, red reflex just to confirm positioning of the lens with those marks. And again, you see the overlap of the rexus. So it looks great. At the end here, we're going to put some medications in the eye. So I'm going to tilt the lens, line it up, and that's some triamcinolone, the steroid that will absorb slowly over the next couple days. I put a little preservative-free moxifloxacin, as well as a tiny bit of carbocol. And now we can check the incisions at the end of the case. We'll put a little sponge on there first with a hypotonic tetracaine, and now a dry sponge to make sure everything's beautifully sealed, which looks great. And pressure is normal. We can take the speculum out and surgery's over.